Hey yo, what's good y'all? Welcome back to 10-5 Plays. Back at it with this video. So, I just finished playing The Last Campfire by Hello Games and, and I knew after the first few minutes that I had to talk about this. You know what I'm saying? And I, I didn't plan on flat out reviewing the game because, you know, I just haven't done that here before, but why not? You know what I'm saying? Now, I haven't played any other game from this studio even though I do want to pick up No Man's Sky, you know, but I, I wasn't aware of who was behind this game when I got it. So I played this on my Switch, so now I'm talking I'm talking about this version alone. So I guess I'll I'll start with the gameplay. You know, I considered this an indie game when I first saw it, but now I I'm not sure if Hello Games is considered indie or not. Regardless, I went into this game thinking I'm playing a small scale game from a small scale company, which not false because only three people made this game. You know what I mean? So the gameplay started in a realm that I expected thinking it was an indie game. You know, you simply move around a small world and usually interact with like a single button. There's no jumping, there's no crawling, there's no leaping across gaps. You know, it's a very, it's very grounded at that level. And then the game opens up more and you go from carrying and tossing things to traveling via boat which actually really felt great you know what i'm saying they they did a simple very effective control scheme to using a paddle boat and to me it was kind of relaxing you know when you're using it you eventually do get a tool which you know i'll leave out because that's spoilers you know what I'm saying? But I guess it, it lets you move a certain type of object around, kind of like Magnesis Rune in Breath of the Wild, minus the physics. And this becomes important moving forward. You encounter a, a number of puzzles to help the four lawns. I, I can't really pronounce it. Four lawns, you know. Forlorn. Whatever, bruh. And these puzzles are relatively contained and can actually be pretty challenging. You know, in most of them, after you get your special tool, using the power to move the objects and solve the puzzles used, it's a creative control scheme. And with some of the puzzles, you know, they were not easy to figure out and manipulate. You know, everything controlled well, sometimes surprisingly well, which was more than I could have hoped for. The world you're playing in can go from slightly depressing atmosphere to vibrant colors with fun characters but it never forgets its underlying tones and themes. You know, this is a game about lost hope. Lost souls who can't find it in themselves to move on. You're the light trying to help others find that light within themselves, you know, what they lost and the atmosphere fits that perfectly. You know, it's fun just to run around and and your character, you're known only as Ember, is adorable, bruh. And it never gets old seeing them going down a slide. You know what I mean? Like, there's no combat in the game, but you do run into characters that are supposed to intimidate you, and it works. You know, especially the big bad bird in the game. And there were times where I wish there was a, a very simple map. Because for, for a small game, there are a lot of different ways you can go. And, and I got a little lost at some points. Nothing crazy, but still. Wherever you go, you're always reminded of why you are there. You know, when you find someone and they're just sitting on a rock, you're reminded of why you, as the character, are making the choices that you are. The story of the game is highly symbolic. But looking at it straightforward, you get lost, you want to get help, and you want to help those who also got lost but they gave up that hope to find their way again you know it was interesting going through each of the puzzles because sometimes it gave you insights into the deeper issues that each of the other creatures were going through at the time when you know they lost hope especially that last one you know i, I don't know man if it i don't know if it was just me but i didn't see that ending coming you know it did catch me off guard and it provided one of those one of those many little moments where the game really shows its heart. You know, there was no grand scale story with intricate plots and numerous characters. You know, it was a very small story, very self-contained, and it had a message and it did great delivering it. And the game looked great too. You know, the visuals, the character designs, 
and the, the color palette it all stuck out to me initially and that's what got me interested in the game in the first place of course it was also for xbox one and ps4 so you see that game looking so pretty in the trailers and you're like ah, i don't know if that's gonna look like that on the switch you know what i'm saying like a lot of these games you know a lot of these companies show off their games they announce it for all consoles and they put no effort into making sure the switch version retains its beauty this was not the case here this game is gorgeous from the level design to the character models i was in in love with how this game looked and in handheld mode the game was still beautiful it might have even looked better than when it was docked i don't know i, I was tempted to play it in handheld mode 100 percent but i knew i wanted to make footage for this video so good game you know there was never a moment where i saw something and went oh wow that's terrible you know they definitely put in a solid effort in the looks department that paid off the sound department too can't can't forget that the sound department man the the game characters are voiced by one person Ember felt so afraid and alone that it was a relief to find someone to talk to. Ember froze, almost too frightened to look away, when they noticed a small satchel. Almost like they're narrating from a book, like reading to a child, and it was really effective. I don't know if I'd like it at first. But it was a great choice creatively, and the game's music was great too. Uh, it's done by a man named Paul Weir, and he delivers. The music really helped put you into the game's atmosphere, and it hit you in the feels when it wanted to. You know, the narration was great because you can kind of exit quickly from the text box, but they'll continue reading to you while you move on. You know, it's a nice touch. And only at the very end of the game did I ever notice the narrator like overlapping themselves and uh, having an error with with uh, how the readings presented, which isn't bad at all. Now, the performance was good for the most part. It runs solid in handheld mode. I noticed more issues personally when it was docked, but those issues weren't anything to deter you from the game. You know, usually when you interact with a furlong, whatever, to enter a puzzle, the game has a very noticeable stutter, and it happens consistently when you do this. It was annoying, but only sometimes was it anything to even scoff at, like, You'd hit some glitches here and there, but nothing crazy. And for the most part, the gameplay was smooth. The frame rate was great. Most of the little issues were excusable, you know, but hopefully a patch does happen in the future for those who be new to the game. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I really enjoyed this game. It was like $15 too, which isn't bad. And for the price, I thought it would be quick, but it, it actually took me a decent amount of time to beat it. You know, I, I might also just be trash, so who knows? No, I'd recommend this game to anyone who appreciates a solid experience. And I say that because, you know, you have a lot of gamers who only play like one genre, you know, sometimes even one game period. Like if you're one of those oh, I only play Fortnite gamers, you know, you might not like this. It isn't fast paced. It isn't action heavy. And it's a game that really makes you question its motives to really understand what it's trying to say. So I'd recommend everyone to pick it up and play it through you know i couldn't be happier that i had this experience now i'm not gonna give it a number rating you know i ain't ign so maybe for now i'll give it a get this bruh it isn't a must have it won't appeal to everyone but i still have to recommend it to all of you especially at that price point so yeah it gets a get this bruh so that's a high score in my book you know what i'm saying so definitely check it out the last campfire by hello games i played it on nintendo switch you can i think get it on your phones on ios you can get it on ps4 you can get it on xbox one and i think oh uh, maybe that's it check it out the last campfire and it really does stick to the name you know it was a great game a great experience and i'm glad i played it so thank you all for watching this video i'm gonna catch you on the next one so keep a lookout all right peace